G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for some more Borderlands pre-sequel. In this video I want to take a bit of a departure from my usual fun content of legendary farming and unique farming guides uh, to touch on something a little bit more concerning, and that is the destruction of the Borderlands endgame with the pre-sequel. Sounds pretty grim, right? Borderlands is a game so good that people can't really get enough of it. The endgame is what these people that can't really get enough of it keep doing to enjoy Borderlands after they've completed the missions and max leveled their characters. Now I'm here with my Nisha character and I'm sure by now many people are arriving at the endgame of Borderlands, the pre-sequel. And some of those people are making a bit of a grim realisation. Borderlands 1 and 2 had a decent endgame. Improvements could have been made, of course, and uh, Borderlands pre-sequel does strive to make some improvements to that endgame as well, but kind of falls flat in a few areas that I'll go over. So, the Borderlands endgame was decent with Borderlands 1 and 2, and it was decent enough to keep people playing until and after DLC came out. People are still playing Borderlands 2 today, and really enjoying still the farming of legendaries and the various endgame activities uh, in Borderlands 2. So what is the end game in Borderlands? What is it that you actually do after you do the quests and reach max level? Because many people just play through the game once or twice and then are kind of done with it. But many of us who really do enjoy the game quite a bit more uh, like to stick with it for a lot longer and do some things with our characters once we reach max level. So there's a few things you can do. The first is to get achievements and badass ranks. These sorts of things have always been pretty fun and lots of people do like so I of getting all of those achievements. The next thing is to level a new character. There's four characters and other characters come out with DLC and leveling all of these new characters, going through the quests again and feeling the differences in skills and everything is quite a lot of fun. So that can be considered an extra end game activity. You know, once you get a ma character max level, you can go level another one. You can do this a few times. So that uh, gives you a fair bit of playtime there. But the final and probably most significant endgame activity in the Borderlands series is the farming for the different legendaries and uniques. Now, the Borderlands series has something that I consider to be uh, an exceptional uh, trait to it uh, that really sets it apart from other action RPGs. I'm a bit of an action RPG connoisseur myself, a loot-based game connoisseur, if you will. I've played plenty of Diablo and uh, Path of Exile, Van Helsing, tons of other games in this sort of loose genre. And uh, Borderlands really does something to set itself apart, and that is specific drop locations and specific enemies that drop specific legendaries and uniques. So basically, this boss is known for dropping this specific legendary, and this other boss is known for dropping this specific unique, and these mobs have a very small chance of dropping this amazing unique. That is awesome! The reason why this is awesome is it gives us an exploratory metagame to the game. So there's this whole act of which bots drops what, and what secret enemies drop what secret things, and what secret areas drop what secret legendaries, and that is a huge amount of fun. And then on top of that, this sort of, uh, this sort of metagame of specific things dropping specific rewards lets us see more of the game content that the do devs worked so hard to put out. So it's a real shame in action RPGs when an amazing Act 1 boss is created, but then it doesn't drop anything specific, and there's other more efficient things to farm in Endgame, and you never ever see that Act 1 boss ever again. So having uh, something specific from each of these enemies that can drop and each of these bosses keeps the game diverse. It allows us to farm many different types of content. Farming the same content gets tiresome and having a greater amount of content worth farming allows players to mix it up and prevents them from getting tired. So what happens when you take specific drop locations away? And this is something I've seen in countless other action RPGs. Well, there's a kind of a, uh, a I guess, a, a, a term that's known and thrown around quite a bit, and that is that water always flows downhill. And that is the same as people will generally follow the path of least resistance. So if there's an easier way to get the reward you want, yeah, most people will usually take the easier route to get it, or the most efficient route to get it, or the quickest route to get that reward. So generally what happens in action RPGs and loot based games like Borderlands is that people find the most efficient way to farm and then they, they either do that most efficient way to farm or they do the less efficient ways of farming and feel like they're missing out. Like they feel like, man I did 6 hours of the less efficient way of farming and I didn't get my drop, maybe I should have just done the most efficient way to farm and then the next day they go and do that. So that sounds pretty bad right? Unfortunately this has been done in Borderlands pre-sequel. So you're probably thinking, but the game still has specific drop locations, it's a Borderlands thing and it hasn't gone away in this game. And that is true, but there are a few things that get in the way of that. 
So I have to say the main problem is the loot grinder. The loot grinder is an amazing addition to the Borderlands uh, game series overall, and I hope it makes a return in fu uh, future games. It allows us to counter some of the RNG of the game and have a little bit more control over how we gear our characters. It's also wicked fun, like putting in stuff and seeing what you get back. So overall, I think it's a fantastic addition. I'm like, I can't stop raving about it. However, it does have a significant flaw at the moment, and that's that it makes it incredibly easy to get any legendary weapon you want. So let's, for example, say you want a ZX-1 laser rifle. Easy. Take two legendary weapons you don't want and put a purple laser rifle in there and grind them and you get a legendary laser rifle back and there's a good chance that it'll be a ZX-1. This doesn't sound too bad, and I admit that I found it quite a bit of fun the first couple times, but even from that first legendary grind, I had a growing concern inside of me that this would ruin Borderlands' uniquely awesome endgame. So what happens is the grinder introduces to the game the one most efficient way to farm any legendary weapon you want. Rather than figuring out which boss drops what legendaries and then figuring out the best way to farm that boss, you can instead just find the fastest, highest drop, rare loot pinata that you can, and then just grind that for any legendary you want. So in this example, what's the best way to get a legendary rifle? Farm Iwajira for the thingy, which is a legendary launcher that he drops pretty often, and then grind the rifle you want. Find a, You want a legendary sniper rifle? Most efficient way to do it? Farm Iwajira. Want a legendary pistol? Farm Iwajira. And so on, I'm sure you guys get the point. Now I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, and this is often a, a, like a rebuttal to any sort of argument like this, just play the fun way instead, and farm the different bosses instead of farming Iwajira. Don't do the most efficient thing. Now, of course, this can and is true for many people. There are plenty of people out there that are absolutely happy to ignore the most efficient farming methods, and they do, and they have fun with the game, and that's awesome. However, for many of us, the fun in these games, and the reason we play these games, action RPGs and loot-based games like Borderlands, is that it, it's incredibly fun for us to figure out the most efficient ways to do things. So, it's not that I want the loot. I mean, if I wanted all of the legendaries in the game, I would just go get a save editor and cheat all of the legendaries in the game. It's absolutely not about the loot. It's about the experience of getting the loot. It's about solving the puzzles to get the loot. So what we like to do is we like to learn the mechanics of the game, discover the efficient methods to take advantage of those mechanics, and then implement those methods as best we can. So it's no real different from people doing things like speedruns and trying to beat their time over and over again. You're just trying to get more and more efficient at doing the different things in the game. So I'm sure after hearing that, this next statement will resonate with many players out there and many people who feel the same way as me. What players like us want is a lot of fun puzzles to solve in order to earn our rewards. We, what we don't want is just one puzzle that can give us every reward in the game faster than anything else. Borderlands the pre-sequel has a big focus on reward at the moment and that gets in the way of the fun of the puzzle. And this is the destruction of the end game that drew me into the game in the first place. So this isn't just a complaint without suggestions either, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I have ideas in mind for how to solve this while retaining awesome additions like the loot pinata Iwajira, which I think is awesome, and the loot grinder, which I think is even more awesome. So I think the simplest way to solve this issue is to change the legendary recipe from two legendary weapons and one purple weapon into three different legendaries. So then the output would also change. The output would be a chance at one random other legendary weapon, rather than a specific guaranteed type of legendary weapon that you want. So what this would do is this would allow us to recycle the stuff we don't want for a fun chance of something new, completely random. Put in, put in a legendary rocket launcher, a legendary sniper, a legendary SMG, and see what you get. Maybe you get a legendary pistol that you've been wanting. Maybe you get another rocket launcher. Whatever, it's kind of a bit of fun. And you still get to recycle those legendaries you don't want. And this change would also mean that at the bare minimum, you would have to farm three different bosses in order to do the recipe. And you cannot just use thingy rocket launchers from Iwajira. You can't just do a bunch of runs of Iwajira. You at least have to see three different types of content. So that's a bit of an improvement at least. And finally, it would also mean that the best way to get a specific weapon would still be to farm it from the boss that it's supposed to drop from. So, let's say there's a specific drop that boss that drops the Fragnum, the 88 Fragnum that a lot of people want. It's an awesome pistol. Instead of farming Iwajira to get two thingies and then chucking a pistol in and getting it, you now have to, uh, if you do, like, farm for different three different legendaries from three different bosses, so you're taking the path of least resistant, you don't have a, you don't know if you're going to get a pistol. You have a much lower chance of getting the specific base type that you want. So you're far better off trying to figure out who drops the thing, the 88 Fragnum. 
And uh, that's still a puzzle that a lot of people haven't solved. Where does this pistol actually drop from? I don't know. I haven't actually heard where it drops from yet. So that would actually encourage people to solve those puzzles instead and ha have fun solving those puzzles rather than, you know, solving just the three puzzles to get the legendary they want. So unfortunately, I do have one more request that is essential to making all of this work. I think, like, that would be a good start, but there's one other thing that needs to be done. 2K. Please allow us to respawn all bosses and reset all quests. And please don't wait until the addition of DLC to do it. Now, Gearbox recognized the need for quest resets at least, and in Borderlands 2 they added it in Ultra Vault Hunter mode. So please don't take a step backwards from that. If we want to farm the unique from Meg, please don't make us Alt F4 our games or exit to dashboards to do it. That's not fun. That is not fun. And there's no real, like, detriment to uh, having... Uh, uh, like, farmable bosses. Bosses that currently aren't farmable, you have to alt F4 to farm. What is the uh, detriment of making them farmable? I can't actually figure that part out. Usually I can sort of see like, oh, okay, I can kind of understand why they did that way, but uh, I really don't understand the, the reason for not allowing things like quest resets, or all bosses and all unique mobs to respawn. Especially once you hit 50 and reset the game, and you're just trying to find fun things to do until the next DLC comes out. So I've really enjoyed my experience with Borderlands The Pre-Circle. Honestly, I've actually enjoyed the game more so than Borderlands 2. And I think with these specific changes, myself and many other people will continue to enjoy it for a whole lot longer. So guys, I would love it if you could share your thoughts on this particular topic down below. Do you guys kind of agree with my suggestions here and my concerns for the game? Uh, do you have any sort of counter rebuttals to any of the arguments I've put forwards? And if you do sort of feel strongly about this, I encourage you guys to share this video around and uh, pass it on to people. The more exposure it gets, the more likely uh, 2K is to take notice and uh, make some of these changes. So anyway guys, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.